Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We've gotten a lot of requests for makeup tips and tricks and techniques and all that good stuff for women who are getting a little older and their skin is changing and so they're not quite sure how to do their makeup the way that they used to do it. And that's very valid. Skin changes and I'm gonna be showing you guys how to deal with that. I'm Grace. I'm Josie. Thank y'all so much for watching. We are Effortless Beauty. So we're going to start by using a primer and Mrs. Bates has drier skin so we're going to be using its Smashbox um, photo finish and this is really going to help your makeup to just go on very smoothly and evenly. Um, I think this is a step that people often forget and it really helps the overall look of your makeup. Just gonna put that all over and then blend it in. Make sure it's evenly dispersed. Okay, so the next step is my color correctors and I will link all of the products in the description below. So today I'm gonna be using a purple color corrector and a green color corrector and I don't honestly know what brand these are and it really doesn't matter a ton I'm just looking for consistency here so this is a very creamy consistency now where would purple go that's so new yeah. to me purple is gonna go directly under her eye if you have some dark circles then it's really gonna help brighten it if you think about Way back in grade school when you learned the color wheel, the opposing color is going to help counteract. Okay. So if you'll put your eyes up again for me. And a little goes a long way right here. Awesome. Okay, so that is my purple. And then the green is going to help counteract any redness that you might have. So. Mrs. Bates's cheeks are just a little this rosy. All, <laughs> new, all these colors. Yes. And as I mentioned before, a little goes a long way. So you really want to make sure that you're just using a little bit and you're evenly dispersing it because every once in a while, if you overdo it, you'll see just a little bit of green or a little bit of purple poking through your foundation. And that can really make you look sick so <laughs> <laughs> that'd be a new look yes exactly <laughs> so next up I'm going to be doing her foundation and I'm going to be using the samples that I take with me on wedding days and they're Estee Lauder double wear foundation and I'm actually mixing that with a um, it's Dr. Jart and it's the BB Disappore and it's just because it's a little bit of a lighter color and I needed to kind of make a little cocktail um of different shades for her skin tone. So I'm just gonna be taking my foundation brush and first off, I'm just gonna kind of dot it around her face. And you wanna be sure that you don't forget your neck. Okay, and after I've dotted it around, I'm gonna pretty quickly go back and rub it in and the reason I say pretty quickly is just because you don't want it to kind of settle in in a big clump um, a lot of times that can just stay there and not look the best later on it's harder to blend and I'm going to be blending in a circular motion and I think this just really helps it to just get everywhere it needs to be and very evenly dispersed. So another reason that I use the BB cream from Dr. Jart is because it has um, a moisturizer in there and I found that to be really helpful with dry skin because 
it really just helps it stay fresh and look very um, moisturized and vibrant throughout the day. Um, another reason is because it kind of thins down the foundation just a tiny bit. And when you have older skin and you have smile lines and all the fun things, um, if you put too much makeup on, it settles into those lines and makes you look almost a little bit older. So I wanted to be sure to apply the product lightly. Um, and there's also broad spectrum SPF 30 in there. And so that's gonna really help make sure that you're maintaining your skin in the best way possible. Skincare is so important, you guys. Um, your routine in the morning, in the evening, what you're putting on your skin, what you're washing your face with is so important. And also what you're walking outside with. So you wanna make sure that you always are wearing sunscreen and that you're protected against the sun. Next up, I'm gonna use concealer. And I've had several questions in the past. Why do you use concealer after you use foundation? And it's just a personal preference. I think that it goes on a lot smoother and it shows up a little bit more. The key to putting your concealer on after your foundation though is that you have to set it with powder. So for my concealer, I'm gonna be using Tarte Shape Tape in the shade Light. And I'm just gonna put a little bit on under her eyes and again a little goes a long way and then I'll put a little between her eyebrows on her nose and on her chin that's made a minute I'll have to remember that yeah it just they say you kind of want to have it like almost like there's a flashlight underneath okay. and it's just shining up and everything's illuminating your face um, and then for my brush that I'm going to be using, it's just a compact little brush. Um, a lot of times I've been asked, okay, how do I know what brushes to use where? And I tell people, you want to use a brush that's right for the size or the area of the face that you're going to be using it with. To make that sound a little bit clearer, if I'm going in and doing the under eye, I want to be sure to use a little brush. That way it's going to be able to get in those little corners and all that. Versus if I'm going on the cheek, I want to be using a bigger brush because it needs to cover more area. Easy peasy. So for my powder, I'm going to be using, it's Laura Mercier, and it's just the translucent setting powder. I'm just going to be using a loose brush. Tap a little of the excess off. And just bake it in right under your eyes. So I'm baking it in under the eyes, around the nose, really any place that's going to crease. To explain what baking is a little bit, I am just getting powder and you don't have to dust it off too much. It's okay to have a little bit on your brush and I'm just placing it under her eye and, and it increases and I'm just letting it sit there and basically soak in on that wet concealer and foundation. The next thing I'm gonna be using is bronzer and I'm gonna be using, it's the Anastasia Beverly Hills. Um, and I am using a very flexible brush so that I can move it around and adjust it as needed. Starting under her chin and just creating a shadow there. If we all have those angles when people will catch us on camera or something we're like, oh my goodness, is that a double chin? And so this will help to disguise those double chins. I need that. <laughs> no, you don't. At this stage, you need all the help you can get with double chins. And then for her contour, you want to be moving your brush up and outwards so that you're Again, lifting the face and not dragging it down. A little around her forehead just to warm it up, but you want to do that sparingly because it, if 
If you use too much, it looks very odd. Okay, so now I'm gonna blend that in with a more compact brush. Blending it upwards and outwards. An easy way to find out where to put your contour in your bronzer is to pucker your face like a fish. And this way you can figure out where your cheekbone is and where to put the bronzer underneath to accentuate that. You can bring it down a little bit, but you don't want to overdo it, just to blend it, just a tiny bit. so it's not so harsh. Perfect. So you might have noticed that the contour and the bronzer made a big difference. Before, she was a blank canvas. It was looking a little pale, almost like she was dead. But, <laughs> thankfully, just warming it up with that bronzer makes a huge difference and just makes her seem you know, full of life and bright and tan and all that good stuff. So next I'm gonna to jump to eyebrows. And again, this is personal preference. If you want, you can go ahead and do your blush. But I always rest my hand on my cheekbone when I'm doing my eyebrows. So I've found that it kind of smudges that more than I want it to. So next step for me is eyebrows. And I'm gonna be using the Anastasia Beverly Hills um, Brow Definer in the color soft brown. So I'm gonna take the spoolie side and brush all of her eyebrow up. So eyebrows are something that as you get older, you have less of. And so you don't wanna overdo it but you do want to make sure that you're using some sort of makeup to enhance your eyebrow. It really helps just make everything flow together and make you seem younger. And cover up the gray eyebrows. Yeah, <laughs> that too if you have gray eyebrows. <laughs> yep. So I'm going to be using small strokes. I like to start not quite at the very innermost point, but a little bit further out. And I start under the brow and I just create the shape that I want in small strokes. Then I go to the top and do the same thing, just creating that shape. And then it's kind of like a coloring book as a kid. You're kind of just filling in between those lines from that point on. You want to be sure not to overdo your innermost point of your eyebrow. If you do, it can make you look a little angry. <laughs> and I know that sounds funny, but it's just too harsh. Our eyebrows, if you look at the way that they grow, it's actually a little bit more sparse in the innermost corner. So you kind of just want to enhance what naturally is already there. And I love the well-known saying, as long as they're sisters. They don't have to be twins, but you want your two eyebrows to look as similar as they can, but we all know they're not exactly the same, so if they aren't perfectly symmetrical, it's okay. If you get too much product in one area, you can take your spoolie side and just kind of rough it up a little bit, and it helps to break up that makeup and lighten it in that area. Perfect. So my next trick that I'll be teaching you guys is how to enhance your brows and also if they aren't perfectly symmetrical, how you can make them seem more like they are. It is a highlighter pencil that I got from Ulta. It's just Ulta Beauty. Um, and I like to put it above the brow. and it helps to hide any little spare hairs that you maybe forgot to tweeze or are just growing out or anything like that.
And what is that called? This is the um, brow pencil or brow highlighter pencil and it's in the color pearl. And I'm just going to take my compact brush again and just kind of blend it outwards. Now this does have a little bit of shimmer in it and I'll talk more about this later. But with older skin, you want to try and stay away from shimmer as much as possible. Um, there's something about it. It just kind of gets into your creases and fine lines and it doesn't end up looking the best. It kind of just enhances those things that you maybe want to disguise a little bit more. So this particular product just has a little bit of shimmer, so it's fine. If you want to substitute your concealer for this instead, that's definitely an option um, to cut down on the products that you're purchasing. You can just do the same technique, but with the light under eye concealer. So I'm done with her gorgeous brows and I'm gonna start on her eye makeup. Now Miss Bates has some really long and luscious false eyelashes in right now, which is so fun. So I'm going to go very minimal on her eye makeup just because they're speaking for themselves. We're just going to let them shine. Um, in that case, I'm going to be using the Glossier um, Lid Star in the color Slip. I love this one. I use it a lot. It's just such a good basic light pink that just opens and brightens your eye, but it's not, you don't have to put a ton of eye makeup on. You know, it's super easy and quick and looks great. So. so I'm just putting it on there and then I will take a small compact brush and I'm just gonna move it around make sure it's all over the lid again moving in upward and outward strokes You really want to steer away from darker colors all over your eye and I'll talk more about that later but as older women try and navigate eye makeup that's one of my key suggestions is just stay away from darker especially all over the eyelid you can use a little bit in your crease but as you can see right here it just looks so good just with the light color all over so as I mentioned before, I'm coming back to blush after I finished her eye makeup. And today I'm going to be using the Morphe palette. This palette is just so nice and natural and it just stays with those cool pinks which are going to look great on Mrs. Bates. So this palette is actually um, 8C is what it's called. And we'll do close ups but I'm going to be using It Girl and Free. And you really don't have to use a ton. If you just start on the apple of her cheek and just flick it out a little bit. And then I'm gonna come back with my handy dandy blending brush and just blend it up and out. Alright, and her blush is done. It looks gorgeous. Um, she already has a little bit of a lip gloss on and I'm just going to continue with that and I'm going to use um, my lip gloss. It's from Dior and it's the color Rosewood and it's actually a lip maximizer. It's a little bit um, of a plumper, which is so fun, especially because as you get older, your lips get a little bit smaller they're not as full as they were maybe in your youth um, so lip plumpers are going to be your best friend I love this shade because it makes your lips look like they have a little something on them but it's not too bold it's the perfect everyday lip gloss and if you'll rub your lips together for me perfect I will take your clips out and you can see the finished product. 
She is so gorgeous. Can't Thank you for difference. doing with me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so now, for those of you who don't know, this is Josie's mom. And coming up next, I'm going to be showing you how to do a little bit of a more enhanced eye makeup look with my mom. So thank you so thank much. Thank you. All these good tips. <laughs> so I just finished Mrs. Bates makeup. And now I'm going to show y'all how to do a more dramatic eye on my mom. So it's going to look a little something like this. So I'm going to take you guys through the steps on how to do this eye makeup look that I've already completed on her left eye. So I'm going to be starting off with one of my favorite products. It's the Glossier Lid Star in the color Slip. I used it on Mrs. Bates earlier and I'm going to use it again. I think it's awesome because instead of a, being a powder, it's a liquid and especially on older skin, I think that it doesn't settle into those fine lines as much. So let's get started. I'm just putting this one all over the lid and rubbing it in with a small compact brush just making sure it's evenly dispersed you can even use your finger and then the next step I'm going to be using my naked palette and it's the color smog that I'm going to be using on her outer corner and her crease so I'm going to take the small end of the brush, pull your lid taut, and you can see just barely, and then I'm going to blend that out. You can blend it in towards the middle and upwards and outwards. And it might take a couple of coats, depending on how dramatic you want it to be. And then I'm also going to use the color Dark Horse. And I'm going to be very sparing with this one because it's very dark. So I think it's important as you get older to make sure that you're using dark colors only on the outside of your eye. From the middle towards the inner part, you wanna make sure you're staying very light with your colors so that it brightens your eyes and opens them and they are more lifted and they are not closing them off and making them dark and scary. And then I'm gonna be going back in the inner and middle with my light color. And I'm gonna be using Virgin from this palette. And I like this one because it's matte, it's not shimmer. And I mentioned it earlier, and I'll mention it again, you do not wanna use glittery or shimmery products on eye makeup, really overall in your face makeup as well when you do have older skin. You probably have noticed I have already completed all of her face makeup. Just this is a side note. And then I have put a small powder guard underneath her eyes before I'm gonna do her eye makeup. This is especially important if you're using dark shades of eyeshadow because it's gonna make it <clears throat> to where you can just sweep away any fallout. Perfect. So now I'm gonna show you guys how to use the eyeliner. So I'm gonna be using a liquid liner for part of her eyeliner. Um, and this is the Stila Liquid Waterproof Eyeliner and it's in the shade Intense Black. Now I am just using this on the outer edge, bringing it in just a little bit. And I am getting thicker as I go out, thinner as I'm going towards the middle of the eye. So I am also going to be using a pencil eyeliner on her as well, and this is just any old pencil, it's wax, um, just black, and I am blending the innermost part into her lashes, 
so that you don't see where that line starts or stops. And then if she'll open your eye, I'm gonna do the inner water line. And this just is a trick that I've found. It helps your lashes look extra big and black and luscious. So I love it. Close for me. Perfect. And then I will just a little bit more on that outer corner. So I've been trying out some different drugstore options, trying to find you guys some affordable makeup options. And I have really liked this Maybelline Lash Sensational. You can pick it up at your local drugstore. I got it at Kroger. And I just am gonna use this as step one. Now you can roll down downwards on the top of your eye um, eyelashes a little bit but you want to make sure that when you're finishing up applying your eye um, mascara that you're pushing the spoolie up and out to help open up your eye and make it bigger and I am just barely touching her lower lashes just so you know that they're there but I'm not trying to coat them now the mascara I've just finished using is a great by itself, but if you want a fuller, more luscious lash, then I have paired it with the Monsieur Big by Lancome um, just to make it extra dramatic. And to be more hygienic, I'm using a spoolie instead of the regular mascara wand. So when you guys try this at home, it'll probably be a lot easier to apply than it is with this spoolie for me. Perfect. And so that is the last step that completes my look for her enhanced, more dramatic eye makeup. I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this video. I know that I have enjoyed sharing the things that I've learned with you. Um, if you want to follow us on Instagram, our Handles are in the description below, as well as I've linked all the products. So anything you need to know is right there. If you will also hit the like button and subscribe, that would really help us out. Thank you guys.